So you are here for the BSCS Five Tools of Unit Writing Tool Number Four, the last one in this series. So I'm so excited you're here with me today. My name is Bree Rivera. I am the former ADE K-12 Science Specialist, and I'm currently working with the ADE to assist with science professional development for standards rollout. And you can currently find me at Mesa Public Schools as their secondary science specialist. We have elementary, middle school, and high school with us. Okay, so this program is the five tools and processes for translating the Arizona Science Standard into instruction and classroom assessment. This is the third webinar of the series. So if you are not here for tool one or tool three, those are recorded webinars that you can visit at the Arizona Department of Education's website and you can hear their recordings. So if you're joining us for the first time in the series and you're a little lost today, just remember you can go back and watch those other webinars. Today is tool four. It is all about using the 5e instructional model to design learning sequences. And this was developed by BSCS in partnership with the American Museum of Natural History and West Ed. This is not the only way that you can use resources and develop units that are three-dimensional and also have components of the 5E in them. But this is a very organized and structured way to do so. And another great reason why we can share these resources with you is because they are hosted on the American Museum of Natural History's website for free completely free. You don't even have to enter an email address when you go to their website. You can just go um, type in Google American Museum of Natural History, five tools, and all five tools, facilitator guides, PowerPoints, handouts are all there for you completely free. So it's a, a nice way to share this with you. I am going to kind of take you through the story of what we've already done so far, just to either jog your memory or to try to catch you up if this is your first time. And we started with tool one. And the purpose of tool one is to develop an understanding of the three dimensions of the Arizona Science Standard, which are the disciplinary core ideas in science and engineering, the science and engineering practices, and the cross-cutting concepts. And to use these dimensions to develop a blueprint for designing an instructional unit. So we started with writing our ideas on sticky notes about a particular topic. And for our example, we used a middle school um, topic on ecosystems, interactions, and energy. Then as we began to use our ideas about what those middle school students needed to understand about ecosystems, interactions, and energy, we really grounded our ideas in the framework. And then we moved on to the verbiage in the Arizona Science Standards. We used unpacking cards to really understand that standard and to really pull out what was important and added in the three dimensions. So there's um, unpacking cards for the standard, the progression, the science engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, and using science, um, which is unique to our Arizona science standards. And all of those cards are available to you in the Google Drive folder that was shared with you for the reminder for this webinar. Then we developed a coherent conceptual flow through the grouping of the cards. So once we understood what the standard was asking of us, we put them in an order that we felt made sense to us and would make sense to our students and created a conceptual flow and an order to teach those standards in. And at the end of tool one, which this was the heaviest lifting load of all of the tools, is to create this tool one template blueprint for the Arizona Science Standards. And we ordered the standards in the way that we thought we would teach them. We identified the important parts of the learning progression from the framework and the Arizona Science Standard, added in the science and engineering practices that we would teach that particular set of standards with, the cross-cutting concepts, and the lens of using science. Then we did not have a separate webinar on Tool 2, but just a quick overview of Tool 2. 
The purpose of Tool 2 is to develop evidence of learning specifications that will inform the planning of classroom assessments. So it's kind of like using a backwards design approach. We look at the Arizona Science Standard and look for the performance expectations that it requires from students. And we use that unit blueprint that we created in Tool 1 and develop the evidence of learning specifications that are aligned with the science engineering practices, the core ideas, and the cross-cutting concepts so that when we're thinking of assessing students, we're thinking of assessing them three-dimensionally. Then we went to Tool 3, and the purpose of Tool 3 was to use the research-based 5E instructional model to develop a coherent storyline that focused on an anchor phenomenon and a conceptual flow of science content. So I had you guys read two teacher scenarios, Mr. Cole's and Mrs. Rivera's uh, unit plans. And Mrs. Rivera's lesson plans, we figured out from the Tool 3 webinar, was aligned with the 5E instructional model and the research on how students learn. We looked at her lesson and how she focused on an anchor phenomenon throughout the entire unit. And that, if um, you remember, was on the wolf, the reintroduction of the wolves into Yellowstone. And then that was all placed into the Tool 3 template, or the storyline and conceptual flow. And today we're going to focus on Tool 4 and creating that learning sequence outline. So the goals for this webinar are to develop a shared vision for the science teaching and learning informed by the Arizona Science Standards, deepen our understanding of how conceptual flow storyline about phenomena and the 5E instructional model support three-dimensional learning, and use the instructional materials and results of the work from our tools 1, 2, and 3 to outline the lessons for one 5E sequence that supports the implementation of our new standards. And we're going to do that with Tool 4. So the goal of our work with Tool 4 is to outline lessons for one 5E instructional sequence that supports the implementation of our Arizona Science Standards. We'll use our storyline about phenomena with a coherent conceptual flow and the 5E instructional model to design lessons in an instructional sequence aligned with the Arizona Science Standards, the core ideas, the science engineering practices, the cross-cutting concepts, and our connections to using science. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at Mrs. Rivera's plan again. And last time in the webinar, I had you guys read Mrs. Rivera's lesson. And I asked you, what do the students do in the classroom? And what does the teacher do in the classroom? And from that, you guys found that Mrs. Rivera's classroom was very student-centered. They were engaging in the science and engineering practices. And it was a, it was, um, they were doing a lot of investigation, finding their own data, having conversations about the data and really analyzing and constructing their own knowledge. This time, I want you to review Mrs. Rivera's lesson again. And, in, um, and last time, we also did identify every single one of her lessons as which 5E it was. So lesson number one was engage. Lesson number two was explore. Three was explain. And then they explored and explained again, and finally elaborated and evaluated. This time, I'm going to have you read it for and tell me where are the three dimensions of science instruction in her lesson. So if you'd go back through the lesson and keep in mind, where do you see specific science engineering practices, specific cross-cutting concepts, and the core idea is, of course, ecosystems, energy, and dynamics. All right. So in the chat box, you're going to find the link to Mrs. Rivera's plan. If you would please click on it and look it over, I'm going to set the timer for six minutes and then we'll come back together.
Okay. Give me an example of one of the three dimensions you found in Mrs. Rivera's lesson. Try to be as specific as possible. If you could give me a lesson number and then what you saw. They definitely were engaging in argument from evidence and probably in multiple lessons, not just one or two. And yes, the cross-cutting concepts definitely throughout the entire unit were patterns, cause and effect, I would even say systems and system models. They did need to construct a model, and that's great to point out because that is the science and engineering practice. That is the one um, identified in the standard. And not only that, they revised that model later on as they continued throughout the lesson. Yep, food webs and models. They did a lot with graphs and a lot of analyzing graphs and explaining graphs, and then even after they've identified the data that was given to them, they needed to search out new data and be able to figure out what data they needed to completely answer the guiding question for the day. Good, so we really should um, have a good idea of Mrs. Rivera's uh, unit plan now. We've looked at it in many different ways, but I'll have you look at it in one more way. I went a little too far. And this time, I want you to look at and just pick one of the lessons. It could be one through seven. It doesn't matter which one you pick. If you remember, if it was an engage or an explore or an elaborate, look at that section on this handout that I'm going to send you and see if what is expected of the teacher and what is expected of the student matches that particular lesson. Okay, so in the chat box, you're going to see a link to a handout that talks about on page one what the teacher does in the 5E instructional model classroom, and on the second page, what the students do in the 5E instructional model classroom. So I'm going to give you about four minutes. Choose one of the seven lessons. <clears throat> one is definitely an engage, so if you want to start there, that's fine and see if what is consistent with the model of what the students should be doing is what the students are doing in Mrs. Rivera's lesson, and what is consistent with the model of what the teacher does is consistent in the lesson. <clears throat> and then let me know, is it consistent or did you find any inconsistencies? Because there might be some. All right, I'm going to set the timer.
Okay, good. So now that we have Mrs. Rivera's lesson in front of us, and it's not a perfect lesson, but it is still a really good representation of a lesson that is three-dimensional, phenomena-based, and is also structured around the 5E instructional model. So I see that you guys have said that lesson one is definitely an engage, and you're seeing some of these things here that is consistent with the model and that Mrs. Rivera creates interest and raises questions. She asks questions to find out what students think and know. And hopefully in that lesson, we see that students are asking questions and they're trying to figure out what they already know about the topic and what more they can find out about it and that they have interest about that topic because that's what an engage is all about. Lesson six is an elaborate. They're given background to apply a similar, similar situation. The lesson outlines what the student should be doing, um, but it's not a scripted lesson or a scripted evaluation. Um, yes, it is difficult for them to do that on their own without, they like to have that guidance, but they're going to be learning so much more when they're given that unscripted room to grow and to think. Lesson two is definitely an explore where they're getting the, the food web cards for the first time. They're working together to solve that problem and to answer questions that they got from the engage. The teacher definitely goes back and redirects the students, but don't give them the answer. In lesson three, they're explaining, um, they're applying their new knowledge and coming up with definitions. Um, Wendy, what lesson is the watch the videos in? Is that the one where they're watching the videos on symbi uh, the symbiotic relationships and they're applying the definitions? I think that I think that's the one. And if that's the one, then um, <clears throat> it does fit into an explore, blending into an explain. Um, the students are watching the video and they're getting the ideas from the video, but they're not getting full-on definitions. They're trying to apply it to their food web and what they know about the relationships in their food web. But if the teacher goes in and um, has the students explain why they put the definition there, or the teacher does the explaining, then it blends into an explain. Good, so hopefully you guys got to see a lot of consistencies with the model. I know there's a few inconsistencies in there, but hopefully you got to see how this whole unit takes form and how it's three-dimensional, 5E, phenomena-based throughout. And that's all great, but now how can we do that in our classrooms? How can we create something similar? So when we pick our standard and we go through the unpacking process and we get to tool three and we have now have our outline with a phenomena-focused storyline and a coherent conceptual flow, we can now use tool four to create an instru instructional sequence and there are some guides to help us get there and to select those resources. So I'm going to give you the analysis guides from tool four, which I'm very, very excited to share with you. As you go through the analysis guide, the first thing I want you to keep in mind is the phenomena. Don't forget the phenomena. If an idea is not related to the phenomena, it's distracting. Don't include activities or ideas just because they are interesting. Go back to tool one and three and review those storylines often. And then we need to add guiding questions for each activity to help us and our students stay focused. So this is the tool four template, and this is set to Mrs. Rivera's storyline. So this is the first, um, the first one up here is engage, and if this is hard for you to read, it may be just right for you, but if it's too hard for you to read, 
in the chat box. I just put a link so that you can make it as large as you need to see it. <clears throat> but you can see that they are really focusing. They know that they want, they need an engage lesson. They're really focusing on what the teacher is doing. And kind of, even though the students aren't scripted, the teacher knows what they're doing. It's very purposeful. They know what the teacher is doing. The teacher knows what they want the students to be doing. They also have their anchor phenomena in mind. With Mrs. Rivera's lessons, it was the wolves are reintroduced into Yellowstone Park. They have their guiding question for the engage lesson. And they've also identified their core ideas, their cross-cutting concepts, and their science and engineering practices. But to get there, you first need to be able to brainstorm or identify activities, find prompts, and to find these resources to get there. And the analysis guides can help you look at the resources that you already have or you're already using in your classroom and determine if they really are an explore or an engage or an evaluate. And then if you think that they are, you can align it to the analysis guide, and then decide, am I, going, am I right? Am I going to keep this as an engage? Am I going to keep this as an explore? Is it close and I just need to tweak it? And the guide's going to help you find where the lesson needs to be tweaked to make it a true explore activity? Or do you just need to get rid of it and find something else? So when you get the guide, it's going to have three pages. And in the first part of the guide, you need to identify your activity. So you need to bring something to the table. Maybe it's a lesson that you used last year. Maybe it's this brand new lesson that you just found and you want to try it. But you want to determine if it's one of the five E's that could fit into a storyline for your standard that you've already kind of figured out what you want to do through tools one through three. So you got to identify your lesson first. Then you're going to analyze it. How well does the activity fit into the 5E model? Then if it mostly fits, maybe you need to revise it or tweak it a little bit. Maybe it fits perfect and you're going to keep it. Or maybe it didn't fit as well as you thought and you're going to get rid of it. But you'll find out after you compare it to the guide. So I'm going to give you a sample activity. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is read the activity. So when I give you the resource, it's going to have the guide as the first three pages, and then a sample activity second. And this sample activity is one of two lessons that Mrs. Rivera was going to consider for her first explore lesson. So I'm going to give you an explore analysis guide and a lesson that she thought would fit into an explore activity. So first, read the lesson, then go back to the first three pages of the handout and mentally do the analysis guide. Check the boxes. See if this lesson truly is an explore, or does it need to be tweaked, or does it not fit at all? So now in the chat box, you're going to find the analysis guide and the lesson. It's all one document. And remember, read the lesson first, go back to the analysis guide, and see if the lesson fits an explore activity. I'm going to give you a little bit more time for this one. I'm going to give you eight minutes because I want you to carefully read through the lesson and be able to do the analysis guide.
All right, and I can see some of you are already answering the question. So I see that some of you are saying that it's already inconsistent if the student is simply told to read the text that is the sample lesson. It gives all the answers. There's no exploration. Um, it's more of a traditional type of just textbook. Read this section, answer these questions, maybe a few thinking about the food web that's in the activity, but no real manipulating using models or anything. <clears throat> now, if this is something that you currently have and you thought maybe it was an explorer, now you know it's not, do you have to completely get rid of it or can you move it to maybe a different E? Could it be something else? Or when you decide that you're tossing it and getting rid of it, it's tossed for good. It definitely could be an explain. You still may need to tweak it a little bit so that students are doing a little bit more of the explaining. But yes, it definitely maybe could move to the explain instead of be an explore. Now, let's see, Marnie, you asked about part three, analyze student thinking. So it's kind of a little bit like getting your mind right. So the first thing, um, questions con to consider, what is the ideal student response to the guiding question? So in, so all of the tools are important. So this is now tool four. So when you start off and you're, and you're looking at tool one, you're determining the order and the conceptual flow you want the unit to be in. You're going to tell a story with this standard, and you're laying it out in a manner that makes sense to you and your students. In tool two, you're now identifying what learning looks like, and you have those evidence of learning statements so that while you're picking out your resources, you, you know where you want your students to go and what learning looked like. Then in tool three, you have laid out the story. So looking at part three, in, in your tool three template, you already have the guiding question decided. And now you're trying to find resources that help your students discover the answer to that guiding question. So in the try it out, what is the ideal student response to the guiding question? Well, you, you want to know the answer to that before you find that resource. So does this resource answer the guiding question or help the students get to answering the guiding question? What knowledge or experience is ex accessed by this activity? And um, so, so looking at the note, is this explore activity going to give students a common experience focused on the phenomena that was decided in tool three? So is this activity going to do that for them? And what common misconceptions might students have related to this activity? Just identifying those beforehand so that um, if this activity does fit, then you know to address them. And lastly, how does this activity help students focus on the natural phenomenon or engaging problem? Just you really making sure that this activity is following your storyline and your phenomena. So yes, we answer those questions um, based on the guiding questions that you developed in tool three. Correct. So there is an analysis guide for each one of the five E's. So there is an engage and explore and explain. There's one for each one of them. And I'm hoping that you guys see them as useful as I see them. Um, I already use them a lot and I'm very excited when I use them and I find something that fits really well or to see where I need to where I need to tweak the lesson a little bit to make it um, an even better version of what it already is. So hopefully you guys will find these just as useful. And it's also important to remember that one lesson does not equal one day or class period. So as you look at Mrs. Rivera's lesson, 
and you kind of use that as a guide. The um, explore activity could take two days. So that means that they would be spending two days or maybe 120 minutes on an explore and that you don't have to do all five E's in one day. It's okay to take two days on one E as long as it's done well. So let me know, do you think these uh, analysis guides are going to help you in your classroom? And what is one thing you want to remember about aligning instruction with the Arizona Science Standard? And what is one thing you want to remember about using the analysis guides? I know for me, the first time I read Mrs. Rivera's lesson all the way through, and we went through all of the um, same things that I took you through, maybe even a little bit more detailed because we were in a live workshop and we had more time, that I remember feeling that just seeing the whole picture put together and everything was just nicely there. I could see the three dimensions. I could see the phenomena. I could see how the 5E model helps with planning and really telling that story and making it interesting. What's something you'll remember? Yeah, that there's a learning, there's a balance to learning. That students need to be able to explore and be able to um, work with the science that they have, but then still have the guidance and the facilitation from the teacher. To remember to have one focused phenomena throughout your entire unit. Yeah. Good. I'm glad that you're seeing how important phenomena is. The standards were written to be taught with phenomena. That was very intentional as the standards were being written. Good. Yes. And it's important to keep your storyline in mind so that you don't wander off and, and you don't confuse your students and the students stay focused as well. Good. I'm glad you could see that the guides are going to be helpful. And don't include something just because you think it's interesting. It should always go back to the phenomena. Marnie, I think if you just look at them as um, I have this great lesson, but I don't know if it's good enough. And then you just see if it matches up with one of the E's. Hopefully it won't be too overwhelming. But it is nice to have something, just something to work as a guide and so that it's just not all over the place, but just have a little bit of focus. Yep, and every time you use a tool and you go through the process, you're going to get better at it and it's going to get easier. I also want to remind you that this change isn't going to happen by next school year or even over the summer, that you need to, you need to allow yourself the permission to have the time to do this well and to do it right. So maybe start with a couple lessons and build your way up to that unit. 
but it doesn't all have to change tomorrow and it doesn't all have to change by next school year. So, so allow yourself that time to do it well. Now is your time to ask me any questions. Go ahead and ask me questions now. I do believe that we definitely want to work towards building a database of phenomena and storylines for the state. Right now, um, National Science Teachers Association, they are starting a storyline project, so they have some. And they're aligned to the framework, so we can find out where they align to our standards, too. And um, they do have a site for phenomena. Um, it's a little clunky still, but it's getting there, and they are starting a really good database of phenomena. Marnie, is it just a Illinois teacher site, or are they connecting to the um, NSTA storyline site, too? Um, Mary, I, I don't see them going away. I, I don't see the American Museum of Natural History removing the five tools. They've put a lot of effort into it, and um, the SCS is still promoting it very strong, so I see it being there for quite some time. The Google Drive folder that I shared with you in the reminder email has taken the NGSS out of it and has put it towards the Arizona Science Standard, so it's a little bit easier to understand through our lens. Um, so feel free to look at either one. And yes, Holly, you will get a resource guide in a day or two when you get your um, thank you email for attending the webinar. And there will be links to all of the resources. Um, Wendy, when you go into the folder and you see Tool 4, and you go to Tool 4 Handouts, you're going to see all of the guides. They're all there. Um, Wendy Madison, do you mean like labs as in students doing lab experiments? Um, they would definitely fit into Explores very well. And especially if the labs are designed for students to plan and carry out their own investigations. Yeah, I think those were the ones I was talking about, Marnie, the, um, the storylines. And I, I hear that's a big project. I haven't had a chance to look at a lot of them yet. But that's really cool. Yeah, and they do have a full biology course outlined. I'm very excited this summer to really explore that resource. Yes, Holly, we can definitely add that to the resource list, the um, where to find phenomena in the storylines. Mm -hmm. And yes, we want students to be doing hands-on work. So yes, labs are important. They definitely fit into the 5E process and three-dimensional. And it's also important that students are the ones that are, they're not, it's you know, not the cookie cutter labs that they are the ones designing and planning and carrying out their investigations. But yeah, and usually they're not just one-day labs either. It is 6 o'clock, and if you guys need to go, go ahead and leave the event. You guys know that I never mind waiting a couple extra minutes to answer your questions. So if you need to go, have a wonderful evening. If you want to ask a couple more questions, I will be glad to stay on. Thank you guys very much.